Hello and welcome to a This Week in Linux Distro Review. I've been asked quite a few times over the last few weeks to start doing more distro reviews, so here we go. Now with the new version of Fedora coming out next week, and as you all know I am a fan of Fedora, I decided I'd go ahead and do a review of the KDE version because I haven't done that yet. Next week when the full release comes out I'm going to try to do a review of the GNOME version, but today will be KDE. Now I've heard there are some users out there that had some trouble getting the KDE version to boot, so what I'm going to do is walk through the entire boot process and I'm not going to cut anything out except perhaps coughs because I do tend to cough quite a bit. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and start it up. You see automatic boot in 10 seconds. I can go ahead and hit enter on that and tell it to boot. And now it's just a matter of waiting for it to, to finish its boot process. This is all going to be real time. Now I will note I did boot this up one time previously just to make sure it would boot. But uh, other than that, I've done no tweaking, I've done no cutting. This is exactly how Fedora 13 should boot in a virtual machine. Assuming you've downloaded your ISO correctly, and now it's coming up. And of course a large portion of this is that it's loading all of KDE into memory at the moment, and KDE is a little bit heavy if you haven't used it before. My experience with KDE is actually kind of limited, so I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough of what is involved with, uh, with this Fedora version of KDE. And as you see here, that, that really didn't take too long. So we're at the desktop, we've got our desktop widget, we've got our KDE menu here in the bottom left corner, I'm really enjoying the logos and the, the theme that comes with this Fedora 13 KDE build. Moving on across the bottom bar, you've got your, your standard KDE panel with your four different desktops you can switch between. The system tray where your running applications would show up. Your clipboard. Your active Ethernet connection. Your audio. An information panel. And the clock. And here's where you'd go to add your more widgets if you wanted to add any. We'll come back to that. Like I said, I'm very unfamiliar with KDE, so a lot of this is going to be new to me. But if I go to the K panel, here's your default favorites. You can install it to the hard drive if you want to. Here's your system settings, browser. Here's the default applications that come with a live environment. You've got several different categories of games, but it doesn't look like there's very much in them. You've got a several different graphics applications. A couple more than actually come with GNOME. Here are your internet options. Quite a few more than actually come with the default GNOME install. Desktop sharing, download manager. Uh, you know, I'm not familiar with most of these, but I have seen them before. Blogilo is a, a blogging client. You've got an IRC client that actually comes pre-installed. That's very handy. Copete for the instant messenger. You've got multimedia applications. So out of the box, you can start burning disks. You've got all of your office applications, and they are of course the K office applications instead of open office, which I'm sure gives them a lot more room to work on the disk rather than having the entire open office suite there. And you've got find files and folders, personal files and stuff. Here is your computer menu which has system settings and information. Let's look in system settings. That took a little while to come up but not too long considering I am on a virtual machine with one gig of memory. Your appearance, um, traditional KDE system settings panel. I mean, that's that's what you're going to find a lot with Fedora. Is everything is the default. It's what the it's what the designers and the programmers wanted it to look like. And there you go. There's Conqueror with the system settings, your disk information, your operating system info. You see, we've got uh, Linux kernel 2.6.33 installed here. KDE version 4.4.1. The display info the driver is using the Mesa driver because I am in within VirtualBox. Here is the processor information. Of course, it's the Phenom 2 945 that I'm using from my desktop. Roughly one gigabyte of total memory. And your different areas that you can go to on your system, your recently used applications and documents, and leave for when you are done with KDE and you want to shut down. Now, looking at here you can add activities and panels and widgets. These are all standard KDE stuff. Let's see what comes as far as widgets. You've got the application launcher, launcher menu, 
You've got your battery monitor, calendar, current applications. Yeah, these all look very familiar. I actually installed KDE on Ubuntu and all of these are the same from what I can tell. Now one thing I would like to mention, just because I am sort of a fan of it, the system monitor applet is very decent. If you drag this out onto your desktop, you get a bunch of different options that you can do with it. I'm actually a fan of Konki on a normal desktop, so this is actually a great replacement if you're on KDE. You can enable viewing of the CPU, of the disk space, your network information, your hardware information, your RAM usage. I'll turn off a couple of these because I'm out of space. <laughs> and your temperature if you have those LM sensors enabled, but I don't because I'm on a, a live disk. But as you see, I'm, I'm only using a portion of the CPU and a small portion of the RAM, and that's really surprising considering this is KDE and it is kind of heavy. You've got your desktop folder, all sorts of just traditional things that come with a live environment. Let's go ahead and look in the default desktop settings and see if there are any other wallpapers that we can install. It looks like it only comes with one wallpaper. You can click get new wallpapers and it will pull up a list of them a bunch of different ones that you can download and install that's one of the things I actually kinda like about KDE is if you see something new like a widget or a desktop or I think even sounds that you want you can just say install this and it'll start working so for example uh, if I want to use let's just pick this one construction takes just a second and then it installs I hit close and I've got a new desktop wallpaper I can use. And there you go. Yeah, I, I'm starting to become more and more a fan of KDE, but I don't know if I would want to switch to it full time. Anyway, as you can see here, KDE on Fedora 13's beta runs very nicely on a virtual machine. If you've had problems running it, you might want to check the MD5SUM on your ISO download. Uh, that's very easy to do if you are a somewhat experienced Linux user. If you're not, you can actually go into the terminal you can actually go into the terminal, navigate to where you've got the ISO downloaded, and type md5sum, md5sum, and the file name, and then it will calculate that md5sum for you, and you can compare it to the place that you downloaded the file just to make sure they match up, to make sure you've actually got a good copy. If you're using a DVD or a CD and it did not work for some reason, you might want to try burning it at a lower speed, but uh, if you've had any problems running it, that is probably a problem with the download or with the disk or possibly even with your system. That's about all I've got to say about KDE on Fedora 13. Next week I will be reviewing Fedora 13 Final, I believe. Uh, hopefully it releases on time. As far as giving this a rating, the KDE looks very nice. I would have to give it about an 8 out of 10. Honestly, the look and feel, if you go back to the default wallpaper, this, this new wallpapers they've come out with for Fedora are very, very nice. So 8, eight or 9 out of 10 on, on the look and feel. As far as performance, it loaded up very quickly. It actually loaded up almost as fast as Ubuntu does in a, a live environment. Now with all that said, of course, the package manager that comes with Fedora, the package kit, it's not the best in the world. Synaptic is actually a little better, but there is a way to install Synaptic and apt-get on top of Fedora if you are so inclined. Personally, I use yum. Yum in the command line is actually a little bit easier to use than apt-get. Uh, with apt-get if you do an update, it's sudo apt-get update, sudo apt-get upgrade. With yum, it's just sudo yum update, and you're done. So as far as usability versus Ubuntu, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to use for a beginner user. For someone who's got a little bit of familiarity with the command line, it's not at all a problem to use. I'm actually going to put a link in the show notes to a setup document from my friend Jay Falco. He's got a bunch of neat little things you can do to get your sound and video up and running very easily, to get sudo set up if you're so inclined, and to get yourself running on a full install just like you would be on Ubuntu with, with a little bit more work but nothing terribly difficult. As far as overall experience, I would definitely give this at least an 8 or a 9 out of 10 because Fedora does some excellent work. I'm really looking forward to the final release with GNOME. If you haven't already, check out fedoraproject.org. Fedora is a great distribution. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Now with the new version of Fedora coming out next week, and as you all know, I am a fedet-